Lord Jesus Christ, I feel very much honored to be given this opportunity to talk to young people about finances from a biblical point of view. Having said that, I think I will also be touching on what does the world say about finances and what does the, the, the Bible says about finances. And in that, I have been given three subtopics which I need to touch, which I want to believe that will then assist us as young people to be able to handle finances going forward. One of them is priorities. Priorities speak, for me speaks about ownership. It is very much important that as we begin to have or handle finances, we must understand who is the owner of that particular asset or those finances. In the book of Haggai 2, 8, the Bible says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord. Eliezer has taught us that everything that we see, everything we touch, everything we possess actually belongs to us. Simply because it's registered in our, in our names from a worldly point of view, it has made, therefore made us to believe that we are the owners of those things. But in actual fact, the Bible says we are mere custodians. We are simply stewards of God's finances. As our guy puts it to say, everything we see, everything we have, as far as silver and gold is concerned, it belongs to God. It does not belong to us. And once we begin to entertain those kind of truth, we will be able to know how to handle finances going forward. Number two, it's living a debt-free life. And that for me speaks about financial management. In the book of Luke 16, 10 says, whoever can be trusted with small will also be trusted with much. But whoever is dishonest with, more, with small will also be dishonest with much. Elizo Gebatandikayo has really taught us that debt is bad. But the Bible has never said that that is bad. In the book of Romans, it actually teaches us that we must pay all debt except the debt of love for each other. It never says that debt is bad. What is bad about debt or about the inability to handle debt is how we use debt. So if Bible merely says to us, we must pay the debt, it does not say we must never have the debt. For an example, Bambalo Abantu who will be able to acquire assets in cash, such as houses, properties, gold, and everything else, including to some extent furnitures. It's very difficult to buy those in cash, especially from our point of view, where we are coming from disadvantaged background. So if I believe that as we are entrusted with small debt, such as credit card, personal loan, overdraft, for whatever reason that you might be taking it for, it is very much important that you must pay that debt because as you grow, as you afford, and as the salary that has been entrusted you to you becomes more, you will then be able to use a much higher debt for you to acquire a huge asset such as property and to some extent those of us who aspire to own businesses but do not have the capital we will hope we will go to financial institutions we will go to government and say can you please borrow us money we want to start a business or can you please borrow me money i want to buy this asset so that on its own is a debt but i can assure you and i can guarantee you as the bible says that if you cannot be trusted with paying small debt, it is going to be very difficult for you to be entrusted in with bigger debts because the creditors will look at your payment history and say, but you're struggling to pay a 5,000 credit card. How can we entrust you with a million grand property? So living a debt-free life, financial management for me, it is all about paying your debt on time and be a person who is entrusted, who, is, who possesses the ability to be entrusted with small so that you can be entrusted with plenty. And then the last one is about preparing for the future. And that for me is legacy. And a good person lives an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Elizabeth again, Matandikayo, has taught us 
that life is about us. We have to enjoy, we have to possess, we have to celebrate, and we oftentimes forget about our children. But in the Bible, no, no, life does not center around you alone. You have to think about your children. You have to think about your children's children. You have to think about your third, the fourth, and the fifth generation as God allows you. So, umbomi the guy of living a legacy. You do not have to be part of it. You do not have to be part of that future. You don't have to be part of the beneficiary of beneficiary of those fruits that you will see or envision in your mind in the future. But you must believe that if you cannot attain it, at least your children must attain those important things. And in conclusion, what are three values for me, which I believe if we can begin to inculcate in line with these subtopics, they will help us going forward. One of them in priorities, you need to be self-disciplined. As far as ownership is concerned, you must always be disciplined at all times, knowing very well that everything belongs to God, it is not yours. On living a debt-free life, you need to be a generous giver. Unless you give and you are generous, God will find it very difficult to bless you as well. Last one, preparing for the future, you have to trust God. You cannot do it on your own. You need to trust God because in Gom Sotina Asilazi and in the Bible of Matthew, we must think about today and not worry about what we will eat or what we will wear tomorrow. So those we need to trust God about. And I believe, but the guy, once we begin to entertain as Nyanis of the Bible, who tickles us neither, get a man and go sit in Jesus Christ. Tiabule la gakulu, nisigeleleke, kwa Jesus Christ we come. We give you the highest praise. We go glorified in this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dance, see ya, Ooh, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. And yeah. And yeah.